Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and you're watching next episode in Landgraf Advanced Series. Today we're gonna check some advanced architectural patterns and I will show you how you can construct more serious and more complex AI agent systems. So join me and let's dive into that together. But before we start looking at the stuff, I wanted to mention that this video is supervised, extremely supervised by angry cats. You can check the merge below. And we dive in. All right, here we are and uh, we can start from supervised architecture. So I'm taking my previous example from the previous video and this is a financial advisor uh, agent or kind of system of agents. And here we have research one, then we do have our portfolio one. Let me just quickly compile it through and I can show you how the way, how the system looked like. And then finally we have the supervisor at the end of the day. And uh, this is the supervisor, the portfolio, the research and supervisor controls the flow and can pass the control from, from itself to different agents. But the thing you have to understand here is that it's a very dynamic system and I'm gonna, going to, to tell you about uh, the multi-level hierarchy here and practically if you think about that, it's not that here, for example, for portfolio research you put some standalone agents, you can also put here a supervisor itself, right? Another one that controls something else. And this way you kind of can create a really uh, multi-level hierarchies and create very complex systems. So this is an example and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to extract uh, different uh, agents from our portfolio and research based on the tools. Portfolio has uh, lookup, stock symbol, fetch stock data, place order and add order to history. And so there will be four agents and uh, we, we will make the portfolio itself a supervisor and try to create the same system. But this is the raw idea, right? You can, you can extract the supervisor pattern and create multi-level hierarchies. Theoretically pretty clear idea about how it looks on practice. It's very interesting and this is something I'm going to show you today. So what we are doing, first of all, let's create a very universal system where we can define agents from the configurations. And first of all, we are defining all the prompts. So we have, we do have symbol lookup, system message, we have market data. And after that, we are defining our agent configuration. And here we have the name of the agent, we have the prompt itself, we have the tools this agent has at the moment, and a description like what this agent can do for us. So what we are doing here, we are defining a create agent function, which takes the practically the agent name and it can have the customizable handoffs. And we are going to look at that a bit later. What we are taking here, we're taking the whole configuration from the agent based on the name. And uh, then we are just creating React architecture agent with the model. We are defining all the provided tools, we have the prompt, uh, we are still have the storage, for example, like in case if this agent needs to save something in the persistent area. And we have the agent name and then we are just returning it. And so we can start creating our smaller systems that will be under the control of smaller supervisors. So the first one is a portfolio agent and here I'm defining a supervisor message that controls one, two, three, four agents. And then I'm creating supervisor. I have four agents under the control. It's symbol lookup, market data, orget, uh, order execution, and record keeping. It's very crucial information. I'm providing the name of the supervisor because we're gonna create several supervisors. So then we have to distinguish them based on names, right? Then I'm doing the same as research agents. Here I have the same, the system message. I'm creating supervisor that has two agents under the control. It's web search and wiki search. And it looks again pretty standard. And now I'm trying to create the bigger supervisor and the bigger this hierarchical system. I'm creating a super supervisor. So this is system message. And here I am putting, like, I wanted to show that you can mix even things here, like I am adding a subsystem here, a supervisor, like two of them, and then I can create here standalone agents as well. 
and the same I'm compiling it at we have really kind of over complicated system uh, it's a very nice example here for the video right but in general in practice uh, you need to like the really problem here and the very challenging thing you have to very thoroughly create all the system message like you have to provide the instructions to every agent so it understands the role in the whole system here and can respond properly it has uh, it has the ability and knowledge how to call something where it's needed etc etc so uh, my point is that it's really pretty easy to create such a system you can see it, it like was a couple of lines of the code but the really challenging thing here is just to configure uh, the brains of each agent meaning the create creation proper system messages for each agent here and uh, we can give it a try and run it uh, pretty simple request here i want to invest in some companies and i have some money to spend on that but this time we are asking this super supervisor system like hierarchy to solve this problem for us and again, while we are waiting for the result, please check the merges. This is about angry cats and they're supervising our super supervisor multi-hierarchical system. They are really cool. Just check it. All right, it took quite some time. And I think the main problem here was the wiki search, which is extremely laggy and slow. And uh, I would never use it in the production. But uh, let's check what we have at the end. We have a human message and this bigger supervisor decided okay let's begin by establishing a temporal context for this inter investment workflow and start by activating the timestamp agent okay that's clear the agent was a uh, tool call to timestamp and in return it back something and then and this time the super supervisor decided to pass the control to research supervisor and this one told us to relay the investment opportunities in Apple, Tesla and NVIDIA. I will first gather current market information and recent news about the companies. And so there is a tool call to web search, right? And the request was, uh, which one? Apple stock news, September 2025. Head back some web search results and another web search for Tesla and results again and NVIDIA web search. And after that, the web search agent provided some summary information about all the three stocks that the information was collected using the web search. Right, and it transferred back to supervisor. And this time, supervisor decided to call to make a call to Wikisearch. And then Wikisearch also gathered some information like about the Apple, uh, what else, about Tesla about NVIDIA, so we do have this search from, we have, we have the information about three companies from web search and from wiki search as well, right? And the output is this one, and then it should pass back to, yeah, to the supervisor. Okay, supervisor decided uh, we have enough information, then we can finalize the investment recommendations here, and then it sent it back to to the super supervisor kind of uh, my job is finished here and then the super supervisor moved to portfolio supervisor and this one transferred to symbol lookup agent and this one returned the company ticket which is wrong right and tesla okay is the correct one and then nvidia as well this is correct one okay but you get the idea, right? Uh, this is how it happens. So we have a very long chain of responsibility passing through from one agent to supervisor, from supervisor to the top level supervisor. And they kind of know what their responsibility and gather information and communicate with each other. So this is the idea of uh, this hierarchical multi-level supervisor system. All right, um, another thing I wanted to show is what's swarming. And this is a bit uh, straightforward thing. Uh, this kind of, you have like a swarm, uh, the word tells for itself, right? But in general, uh, what's that? You have several agents and this is up to you. You define who's know, uh, who is knowing about the other agent, like uh, what the connections between them, like basically 
You can go with the very simplest way, for example, everyone knows about everyone, or it can be based on their interests, for example, and that's it. Like here I have one, two, three, four agents, and they know about each one. So, for example, web search can make a call to wiki search if needed. It can call, make a call to timestamp or to market data. Uh, what else here? You define the entry point because your first user request should go to somewhere. And in this time, we are defining entry as a web search. And that's practically it, right? Uh, the big drawback of this system, it's really hard. It's uh, really hard to configure it. It's really hard to predict what's going to happen here because you need to think about all the system messages of each agent very thoroughly because it's very, uh, it's very hard, right? You need to, to kind of, in a general way, define the idea of the agent and what it should do, what kind of um, tools it has, what kind of possibilities to talk to other agents exist, etc. What you need to understand here is that it's your responsibility to create your manual hand of tools. And if we give it a try, so we have, we have, again, we have this, our agent configuration. For example, I'm grabbing market data agent here. And so I'm defining the agent name to uh, market data. And then I have to provide description. And this one I'm taking from the name and from the agent's description here. So this is the uh, kind of uh, handoff tool I'm going to create for this agent. And look at that. We have a name transfer to market data and description is transfer user to market data agent. The agent retrieves current stock prices and market data. And this provides some additional hints for the model where this tool can be used. So this is also very critical, crucial information you have to define. So what we are going to do here, we are just grabbing two agents. So it's web search and market data. Then we're going to create all the different, uh, all the different handoff kind of connections. So web search will know about market data, and market data will know about web search. And then we are going to create this warm, bigger object and defining the uh, entry point or default active agent to web search. And we have it here, the graph. So every each agent knows about the everything else. And then we can try and uh, make a call, but just this time let's let's make it a bit simple. So what are the latest NVIDIA news and developments and what's their current stock price and market capitalization? Okay, what do we have here? We have a user message, then we have a web search, and this is because this one is an entry point. So it run the web search in the internet, we have some results. And after that, this agent decided to transfer to market data. And then market data gathered something and provided us the information. So this is how it works. Let me recap what we have here. The main point here is you are using create swarm. You are providing a list of agents. You define the entry point. This is the agent name, which should be the first one in a row. And then you have to define your handoff tools. Like you manually decide about every agent, which are the agents or what possibilities every agent has to make a call to other agents. So this is the crucial point of creating this uh, swarm architecture. All right, that was it. This is the end of the video and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you have learned something new about the land graph, about building AI agent architecture and you know something more about the topic. And it was me, Evgeny. Thanks a lot for being with me till the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.